I'm Neil. Today we talk about heat and temperature. Now the average person uses these two uh, words interchangeably, but they really are not the same thing. Um, temperature uh, is really <clears throat> a subjective uh, parameter. You know, for example, if two people are walking down the street and a, a wind blows, one person may claim that, well, they're cold. The other person may claim that, well, that had no effect on me. I'm not cold at all. I'm actually quite warm. So what does that mean? Uh, temperature can't be a measure of the hotness or coldness of something. That's very subjective. Um, in actuality, temperature uh, is a measure of the average kinetic energy uh, or the average energy in general uh, of a material. Now, heat is a transfer uh, of internal energy. For example, when you lose body heat to the atmosphere or to the water, um, that's a flow of heat, internal heat. Now, uh, the, the, ultimately, the source of heat for the Earth, uh, uh, at least from an external point of view, is our sun. Um, the heat from the sun you know, runs all weather on the planet, heats up equatorial waters, and these waters, they migrate to the the, the polar regions and you know, takes the heat with them, uh, heats up the atmosphere and, and so controls the weather. So the redistribution of heat around the planet uh, is caused by these ocean currents. Uh, the heat from the sun, you know, in particular the energy from the sun, uh, it runs the food chain and makes photosynthesis possible. So ultimately, uh, at least at the surface of the earth, all heat uh, from the sun uh, runs the planet. Uh, there's internal heat as well from volcanoes and uh, radioactive decay, etc. Uh, so here's a picture of uh, Yellowstone National Park. It's the largest concentration of geysers uh, in the world, actually, uh, uh, in Yellowstone National Park. And so these geysers, uh, it's uh, rainwater that filters into the ground, into groundwater, and gets heated by the magma. Um, that gets very, very close to the surface uh, of the Yellowstone Plateau. That's how these geysers get heated. When you heat the water, uh, uh, the pressure goes up and it erupts as uh, these geysers and it falls back down and collects in these uh, very hot pools. You can see the steam in the picture, lots of natural heat uh, being liberated. So if, uh, if we look at the, what's in this chapter, we define the concepts of heat and temperature like I just did uh, from a more mathematical perspective. And we talk about um, the different scales uh, used in measuring temperatures, uh, the Fahrenheit scale, the Celsius scale, the Kelvin scale, there's a Rankine scale as well. Uh, only a few of these are commonly used. For example, in the United States, uh, we use the Fahrenheit scale. Uh, Europe uses the centigrade scale or the Celsius scale. Um, the scientific community uh, it uses the Kelvin scale. So the differences between these two scales are explained and also how do we mathematically uh, go from one scale uh, to a, another is also uh, discussed. Uh, and then the concept of heat or the transfer of energy, of internal energy is discussed and the units uh, for this are also discussed. Um, in terms of joules or the calorie, for example, our readers might be familiar with the calorie. Um, uh, and the calorie uh, is also used to define uh, food calories, you know, how much energy is liberated by the foods uh, that we consume to perform bodily functions and, you know, growth, etc. Um, and the conversion between the joules and the heat is discussed, uh, a concept of uh, heat capacity and specific heat capacity, how much energy is required to raise a particular amount of a substance by uh, a unit degree. Uh, this is the heat capacity or specific heat capacity. Uh, that's also discussed. Um, the mechanisms of heat transfer, um, conduction, convection, radiation, um, are also discussed uh, how we get our heat from the sun. This is by radiation, for example. Uh, conduction works on the basis of an actual material that takes uh, internal energy from one uh, object and transfers it by something that's physical, uh, like um, a piece of iron, for example. You hold one end of it, heat up the other end, you can get uh, heat from uh, the heated end traveling towards the end that you're holding. That is via conduction. Uh, or convection, for example, convection ovens. Uh, 
where you need the material, the medium, to actually move, like hot air, for example, moves throughout the oven and it cooks uh, your food evenly because the air is coming in from all directions and it's constantly being uh, circulated or recirculated. Uh, so that's an example of, uh, of you know, convection, these convection ovens that work. Uh, the method of mixtures, you know, uh, it's a conservation of energy, uh, heat energy in this particular case. When you're mixing materials at different temperatures, uh, heat flows uh, from the region of higher temperature to the region of lower temperature. This is uh, because of energy conservation. So several examples are done using uh, energy conservation. Um, and uh, using the concept of heat capacity uh, as well. And so uh, when there's a change in phase involved, when you're heating an object up, if you're, you're receiving heat, for example, you're boiling water and there's too much heat for a lengthy period of time, the water goes uh, from the liquid phase into the gaseous phase. Uh, and vice versa. When uh, a vapor condenses into a liquid, it gives heat off. Well, this heat that's responsible uh, for or occurs during the change of phase, uh, it's called latent heat, and latent heat is a <laughs> peculiar concept in that when you're undergoing a phase change, um, uh, there's heat being either absorbed or liberated without a temperature change being involved. So it's quite a phenomenal concept. This is called latent, latent means hidden, there's hidden heat involved in the phase change. So whenever there's a phase change, you know, ice uh, melting into water or water freezing into ice, for example, there are different kinds of latent heat, uh, latent heat of uh, condensation and evaporation, etc. Uh, to consider a latent heat of sublimation if you skip the liquid phase altogether you go from a solid right to a gaseous phase. So all of those different concepts are considered in this chapter. And we do several examples uh, to calculate uh, the heat lost by one object and the heat gained by another object. Right? Well, that's what this, uh, this section is about, uh, a variety of chapters. And uh, you know, it turns out that Yellowstone National Park certainly isn't uh, the only place on Earth where we've got these hot springs and these geysers. Uh, it's the largest concentration of geysers in the world. As a matter of fact, uh, the concentration of geysers uh, in Yellowstone uh, it's it far outweighs the known geysers everywhere else on Earth combined. So it's a very large concentration. It's definitely worth a trip to go to Yellowstone National Park. Um, here's another place in the world. Uh, this may look familiar if you're um, a Hobbit fan or a Lord of the Rings fan. This is the actual filming location uh, in New Zealand uh, of those movies. This is the Shire, the actual Shire, um, home of Bilbo Baggins. Uh, and this is where all of this happened. The actual movie set, you can actually take a tour like I did. Uh, it, it cost an arm and a leg, but it's, I guess it's, it's worth it <laughs> um, to go here to see where the, you know, these movies that were so popular were all made. And this is the actual Shire. So uh, not terribly far from the filming location is a place called Rotorua. Rotorua is also a place of natural hot springs and geysers. You can see the vapor coming off uh, as this very, very hot water comes up from underground and meets the cool air above. Uh, uh, <clears throat> the water uh, evaporates into all of this mist and steam. Um, so definitely a place that's uh, worth checking out. You know, so several examples are done in this chapter. Uh, on the change of phase, the latent heat, um, uh, the migration of heat, um, flow internal heat. Uh, the concept of thermodynamics uh, is also introduced based on the properties of how uh, heat flows from one area to another. Um, there are several laws of thermodynamics, the zero law, the first law, second law, uh, etc. And so we talk about the different laws of uh, thermodynamics and how this relates to what's called the entropy of the universe. Uh, uh, a state of disorder or chaos, if you will. Um, so um, it, it's, it's quite a interesting thing, uh, these laws of thermodynamics, how they govern the relationship uh, of internal heat from one body to another. So uh, as with every chapter, there are additional problems to consider. Um, uh, <clears throat> and so it, it aids in the reader having uh, gained some experience in how to handle heat flow. Uh, from one region to another and the conservation of energy, etc. Now here's um, uh, my trip to Antarctica and these are the Gen 2 penguins and there are many thousands of them here. Uh, 
And if you notice that uh, when penguins move, if you ever watch like National Geographic, uh, the penguins as they slide, uh, they do so on their stomach. Um, of course, more of the surface area is in contact with the ice and snow, removing heat from their body as opposed to this guy who's just standing still in upright position. So it's an interesting concept over here. So it's, uh, they're limited to how long they can stay like that in that uh, horizontal position with the heat loss from their body in a place like Antarctica. Um, so I've been there to see it for myself, so I've made an interesting example uh, in the calculations of uh, the heat loss of what happens for a penguin as it moves from one area to another, maybe sliding down a hill to get to the ocean you know, so it can go feed and you know, eat some fish, and how much fish should it need uh, to eat uh, to compensate for the amount of energy it expends actually getting to the ocean, so that was an interesting example, I think. So the, at the end of this chapter, the reader ought to have a really good concept of heat flow, uh, the mechanisms of heat flow, how to calculate latent heat, uh, fusion, vaporization, condensation, etc. Uh, the different temperature scales and how things are measured. So once again, I thank you for your time.